Hello. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, welcome to my talk. Um, I'm going to be taking you through some sort of interesting left field uh, typefaces today. So um, hopefully you enjoy. But uh, without much further ado, uh, let's get into it. Just share my screen. So yeah, uh, my name is Barry Spencer. I am uh, going to be taking you through a talk I've let called uh, Typographic What Ifs today. And basically the talk is about how I've gone about um, constant exploration uh, with letter forms and experimentation and speculation and how that has changed my perception of what they could be and my understanding of them and how I create them. And it's led to some pretty cool and unexpected places in letter forms. So let's just yeah, get straight into it. So who am I and what are you in for? Well, um, uh, like I said, my name is Barry Spencer. I'm a type designer from Melbourne, Australia. Um, within that, I sometimes call myself a speculative type designer just to give people a tiny little bit more of an indication of what kind of work that I do and what they could be in for. Um, and in terms of today, um, like I mentioned, I, I, I thought I'd take you through a bunch of sort of left of field, different approaches to type design that, um, that I take to um, just challenge my creativity and push me into new places and, and see where it takes me. But it's all coming from a sort of experimental and speculative approach um, because I'm interested in testing those sort of boundaries of letter forms and uh, different constraints of letters and where they could go and what, what I can do with them. So um, within that, I, I really do in love, I, I love uh, exploring letter forms. I've got many, many different journals and uh, places that I like to draw. And um, even though this, uh, the video that I'm showing you at the moment is fairly straightforward for what I do, it shows you that sort of process of what I go through in terms of uh, trying different iterations over and over and over to sort of come up with type. And it might be a sort of more traditional way of making letter forms, but I find it a really sort of key component of how I uh, come up with some of my ideas. Um, but uh, from that drawing comes a lot of different sort of results. And so what I thought I'd do at the start of my talk here is go through a bunch of, like uh, a quick fire round of how, uh, how I've made type and what I've made over the last sort of 15 years. Um, to give you an idea of how I ended up from a place where I thought a letter for an, an A should look like an A through to me being okay with it, it not looking like that anymore if I choose to not make it look like that. And so when I started making type, when I when I decided or chose that it would be the, the filter that all of my, or most of my creativity goes through, um, I started out pretty prolifically uh, and it was about making and learning when I was doing this and uh, I just hit the ground running and I went pretty gung-ho at it and uh, I made lots of different things but looking at it I, I can see that a lot of it was quite obedient um, from a sense of um, I was still probably in the realm of uh, thinking about what I should be doing as opposed to what I could be doing and I, as much as I still tried some of my weirder ideas I didn't think they had a proper purpose or that they had any sort of future in them I, I, I just did them because I, I, I wanted to see um, but, uh, as I go through, I'm going to show you in sort of two year lots. And so in the next sort of two year, um, period, like I found that by doing all of that stuff in the previous one, I, I began to sort of test the waters a little bit more in, in this sort of space. And, uh, it was coming from like, I, I started to solidify my thinking and I had this driving sort of mantra that I went, uh, that I went with that was called, it was how, uh, far can litter forms be taken forward or stripped back before they no longer considered letters. And that drove me for quite a long time. And uh, as much as in this sort of space or this these couple of years, there's less output, there's a little bit more refinement to what I was doing or, or a little bit more uh, clear in my thinking of what I was trying to achieve when I made type. And I was getting more and more interested in finding the edges of understanding um, in terms of, you know, what's a letter and what's a graphic mark and all that sort of thing. So um, that when I moved on to the next sort of phase, uh, I found that my perception of letter forms and my understanding was shifting. And I'd, I'd begun or I was in the middle of um, uh, doing a doctorate at this point and I... Uh, I was looking back into history, but also looking forward into like what letter forms could potentially do or what would I imagine they could do in the future. And, and sometimes mixing these two things together. 
Uh, so it was a really sort of uh, fun sort of period. I was happy to break with convention. Uh, this is this is where this sort of proper um, thinking started to happen. And what went with that was uh, if I was willing to break with convention, I was getting more and more interested in articulating why I was breaking with convention and, and being just trying to get better at saying what what I was doing and what it, what it was for. And uh, so... Uh, in this next sort of period of time, like I, I was at the back end or finished my PhD and I went back into a sort of prolific sort of creative state and I was interested in sort of exploring boundaries uh, once the PhD was done. I, I, um, I was basing stuff on fairly heavily gridded uh, or grid patterns and I, grids have a really strong influence on my work. I really enjoy using them for their ability to allow for a sort of lack of control or a loss of control. Like if you use a specific kind of grid uh, and you have a expected idea of what a letter form should look like in your head, sometimes the grid won't allow you to do that. And so you have to adapt or um, convert your thinking to what's happening within the grid. And I, I find that really sort of interesting. Um, but uh, in this space, I also was allowing myself or engaging with a process of practice of um, being influenced or inspired by people and places um, as much as I could to to drive certain shapes and everything forward. And so um, in the next sort of period of time, I took that inspiration from people and things, but introduced sort of uh, techniques and uh, technology into my work as my, uh, a little bit more. And I found that like... Uh, I went off and learnt a little bit more about calligraphy and sign writing and then tried to adapt those or um, convert, mold them into my way of thinking or my, my approach to type and see what happened when I learnt that sort of, um, those more formal things. And uh, when it came to technology, I was very curious about what I could do with my type if I like uh, introduced the variable um, fonts into the mix or, and, and, and that sort of thing. To, to bring a sort of heavier influence or emphasis on user interaction, like what would other people do with my type? I, I, was, I was always sort of curious with that. And, and that led me to put on my first solo show at the end of this sort of period where I, through my exhibition, I, I laid it out in a certain way uh, that took people physically like in the space through something more straightforward in terms of a typeface through to something more speculative. And then if they went from a different, um, went through it a different way, they I took them from sketch through to working font that they could actually key in and, and use. So that was a sort of uh, uh, an interesting sort of process there. Um, and then that kind of brings us pretty quickly to now and then the work in progress that I have at the moment. And uh, like at the I, I, at the moment, I've, I try to design a typeface for this uh, talk. I usually use these things as sort of catalysts to make stuff. Uh, but that one typeface turned into four different typefaces and then none of them got finished. So uh, you uh, keep an eye out for you know, what might come from that. But uh, it's been a strange year in terms of my creativity and I found myself sort of looking uh, to push the technological aspects of my work a little bit more and that engagement. And uh, I, I've also found that I've enjoyed revisiting um, my, a lot of my previous typefaces to work with them from a new perspective and skill set that I've um, you know, uh, gained over the years. But the reason I, I went through all that sort of, um, you know, breeze through 15 years of development was I wanted to show you the sort of gradual process of how I started and where I got to sort of where I am today and show that it, like, it came with a uh, like a, a big learning process. It, that, that was the point. That was what I really enjoyed about any of this or, or what I do enjoy about any of this. And uh, I, I found that over this period of time, through all my trial and error sort of um, undertakings, I, I, I found that I was getting more okay with messing up or not knowing what the answer was going to be or, um, or attacking things or approaching things from a a perspective of open creation so it was okay to just make and then see what um, came from it and it's something I'm always interested in in terms of trying something new I have a semi nasty habit of saying yes to a lot of things but um, uh, one of those things for instance with this was this exploratory type wall that I made for um, the place where I teach LCI Melbourne and um, for this, it was about challenging myself to work at a different scale. And as much as I used a piece of paper that I'd drawn on um, by the end of it, 
uh, it was about bringing my work up to a larger scale, engaging my students and showing them sort of um, that experimentation and play and uh, exploration is a good thing within your work and uh, that I chose to make this sort of about uh, open creation and freeform creation. So like when I was drawing the letters on the pages, uh, on the page, I, I wasn't concerned about where it was going to be or how big things were going to be. I didn't plan it out. I just drew from and adapted to the grid. So um, it was a cool sort of uh, undertaking and way to think. Uh, but lots of what I do comes down to um, what if questions. A lot of the time it's what if, and you're gonna get sick of those words by the end of my talk. Uh, uh, sometimes it's not what if, it's if then, but uh, they're all those sort of statements uh, of, of query, uh, inquiry or whatever. And it, it, it's close to a sort of scientific experiment. Like what if I did this? Or if this happens, then this is how I respond or react or, then this is how someone else reacts. And uh, it comes down to those sort of control and trials and tests. So the control being the Latin letter forms that I understand and then what happens if I do these things to them. But um, within that exploration, there's a lot, uh, it, it sort of comes down to sort of six key or core questions that like they can boil down to. And what I'm gonna show you now, like you, you'll hopefully be able to see these sort of direct visual links between uh, or connections between things I've done in the past and things that I do now and how they've sort of evol evolved over time. And, and so I'll take you through a couple of detailed thoughts or concepts or processes for a few um, focus typefaces now. So the first thing you might want to ask yourself or, or like approach type with is what if I did nothing? Like what if I um, treated things a little bit more straightforwardly or understandable or um, used some expected shapes uh, or formats or whatever or configurations and and kept things in a sort of safe realm that like I know someone's going to understand it after this um this is this is a val valuable sort of place to begin or to stay or whatever like this is what most of us will know this is the most sort of functional sort of area and uh within this you can still have some nuance like even when I do this I I try to bring something to it as much as I can and one of those, uh, the, what I want to focus on here was a typeface I made called Gertie. Uh, and Gertie was designed for an exhibition where um, the, the conceit was to use a brush. Like it was called Tools of the Trade. It was for the Melbourne Lettering Club. And everyone in the exhibition had to use a brush to make their artwork. And within that, I knew there was going to be lots of like really cool lettering pieces. And uh, I'm not really a letterer. And so I, I decided to like approach this from... Uh, the perspective of like, well, well, how would I, how would I use a brush, or what would I do with a brush, or um, you know, what would I do in this sort of thing with this thinking and application? So uh, they gave us a template and they made um, uh, to work from. And I decided, well, what if I crammed as, like the letters or made them interact with each other and and did that in a certain way, uh, made them engage with each other in an interesting sort of way, and then applied the brush to that te te technique. And what I found was that I, I got to a point where I'm like, well, what if I also treated the horizontal strokes different to the vertical strokes and uh, and then made them different colors? And what it led to was like something that was seen differently from far away and uh, than it was up close. And then I was interested in that sort of interaction uh, with it. And it led to some pretty cool uh, letter forms and uh, nice sort of weird uh, interactions and interferences with letters and um, adapting their shapes to uh, kind of interesting sort of shapes. But also those the texture that came out of it was something that I really appreciated and uh, I, I definitely want to, uh, I'd love to continue this kind of thing uh, with another typeface or a bunch of them and there's some in development at the moment. But but that, that was sort of looking at Gertie and um, if I did nothing really to letter forms to mess with their construction. Um, well, left them in a space where that was understandable. But the next sort of thing you might try or consider would be what if you altered detail within a letter form. And uh, and this sort of uh, still stays in the realm of familiar, but there might be a little bit more, like the, the letter forms themselves might be pushed a little bit further or there might be some slight quirks in them. And again, really nice sort of place to um, explore. And what I thought I'd talk about in this uh, area was a typeface I made called Angel. Uh, funnily enough, called Angel because I spelt the word angle wrong when I saved the file, but then I just left it. But um, the with uh, Angel, like I was still I, I was interested in using like a heavy sort of grid structure, but this is sort of where I began uh, adding an element of custom, so the diagonal lines, but also 
a specific rule setting. Like if I do this thing, I have to stay within this idea or this conceit. And um, as much as it led to letter forms that were still kind of familiar, things that I was doing with them uh, definitely have influenced what I've done since then in terms of being able to like move around components of letters or start them in a specific different place or move them to a different place. And you can still kind of understand what's going on. And so with this came a nice sort of rhythm with the letters and uh, um, the typographic adjustments I did definitely expanded my thinking. So if you move beyond there, you can reach a place where you might be like, well, what if I remove detail from a letter? And uh, when you remove detail from a letter, uh, I find a lot of the time it's about letting the the person on the other side, the reader or the observer or whatever, fill in the gaps because different people are going to understand different things or, or switch on to different things. So there's heaps of possibilities in here and heaps of opportunity uh, to try things and to make small changes that mean a lot on the other side. And um, within a lot of the stuff that I do, I find that like Gestalt theory plays into it a little bit where people will fill in the gaps and it depends on how they're... they're interpreting it that to, to how that happens or what happens with that so i have a lot of fun in this area and it's something i really always enjoy coming back to so the 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 typeface i thought i'd talk about here is uh one called aid and aid was designed for an exhibition um uh last year and well no it was designed for a uh a social media takeover uh sorry and uh with this i i took over the melbourne lettering club's um social media uh, platforms and uh, as a part of a res residency and I wanted to create something from scratch in real time so each of the posts uh, took people on the journey of how to create something or um, take the audience through how I made type and hopefully in, in influence them to make some themselves and so uh, I, I took them on that journey of perception and understanding and I tried to do that through a typeface that had sort of variations, like three different variations where I gradually took detail away from the letter so that you came, became familiar with one part and then I started to take it away um, and, and showing those steps of removal. And it leads to uh, lots of cool interesting shapes and uh, three different kinds of w ways of working with a typeface. Um, and, and interesting sort of um, some texture in there as well with the line artwork. And what it um, what happens is like when you start to compose it into longer uh, pieces of text, uh, I, I often like to sort of take away a lot of spacing as well and to see what happens when the letter forms like engage with each other or interfere or in interact or whatever. Um, and um, there's some really nice sort of things that came out of it. And you can see how it's sort of can tie into a, a bit of a few of my earlier sort of experiments. Well, I can see it. Um, so the next question you might ask is, what if I rearrange detail? And rearranging detail um, leads you to often taking something familiar and moving it like closer to like it's going to become less familiar or unfamiliar even. Uh, but it's definitely in this realm that you start to stretch uh, people's understanding a little bit further. Uh, you can make some pretty unique letters in this sort of space, um, but it will definitely test the clarity of understanding. Uh, and, and essentially it all boils down to like, well, what if I took something we know and moved it around to, to see what happened, uh, what happens when we do. So within that, I thought I'd talk about uh, my typeface Clue. And so Clue came about because I was interested in, or I wanted to get into working with um, the Glyphs app software a little bit more. I hadn't used it too much at that time, and I definitely thought um, I wanted to explore variable typefaces a little bit more uh, and get into that and move stuff around and learn about it and move components and make multiple variations. And and I thought that that could create some sort of unique combinations of letters. And so through this process, I tried to take uh, that idea of like the familiar through to the unfamiliar but through interaction with, with the letter forms themselves. And um, I like the idea of like playing with space or so where I could make something quite wide, but in the same typeface make it quite thin or a tall or um, rearrange the, the components of each letter. And it led me to uh, creating this thing that has lots of different variants. And I've even added a couple to this since then. And it's become this sort of versatile beast that um, has even gone off to become the 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 main typeface within the branding for a brewery. And uh, I've really enjoyed like the fact that 
something has come from me just wanting to learn about a program a little bit more and and led to sort of all these different opportunities and things so it's quite cool uh but then from there you might ask what what if i added detail and adding detail adds a level of complexity to things and with that complexity may come confusion or you might bring it to challenge like um because within within adding detail and sort of overcomplicating things or um, or something like that, you you start to add light elements uh, of decipherment or the beginnings of decipherment anyway. And um, within that realm, I thought I would talk about my typeface five by. And so five by was designed for uh, was actually designed for an exhibition this time uh, called Letterform that was there to celebrate. Um, uh, different ways of people making type or different approaches to type and I I made this and I was inspired by um, like little puzzle games and like the spe specifically those ones where you move the uh, the pipes around and connect them all up or like the ones where that has a metal ball in it and you move it around and the ball goes through the maze but um, I with this typeface I ended up in a place where I wanted to make a like letters that were five by five like that was the grid that, that was the space that i had to work with but hence the name five by but like um what i wanted to approach this with well, the, the perspective was um i wanted to randomly draw the letters first and then associate meaning to them afterwards and so like you'll see in this sketch uh or this page these pages like why i've got like question marks next to is, th th is this my h or is this my y or is this my c or is uh all that sort of stuff and um that idea of bringing meaning to it later uh was an interesting sort of process because it meant that i just drew and i didn't have to necessarily think well that doesn't look enough like an a yet um by just con con continually adding detail uh i also played with stroke weight in this because i was kind of uh, interested in like if a thicker uh, weight of the lines led to something being clearer or less clear if it was a thinner or whatever um, So that was a little added element in here as well But uh, the main part about it was like I, I wanted to take away all the space around everything You just saw that sort of coming in before but uh, for here I definitely wanted to do it because I was curious about what happened uh, What kind of intersections would be made with all the letters and you get some pretty cool um, pattern and texture that comes out of it where it becomes its own um, sort of weird little beast and uh, allowing the letters to run into each other is something I often sort of like to to try out. So that kind of leads us to the big question, or a big question, which is what if I changed everything? And so by changing everything you come at things from an element of sort of full discovery and if you want to, you can not be influenced by type history or uh, print history or language unless you choose to, and that's the point. In this area, you can, you, you're can you starting from scratch. You're deciding where you want to begin things. And, uh, yeah, I find that it, I, I'm able to come at it from a point of, like, free and open creation uh, and to see what happens uh, and learn from it uh, as I do. And uh, the cool thing about this, or I find the cool thing about this, is that meaning gets associated to these, or connected to these letter forms uh, during or after the creation, and we can sort of sidestep or um, play around with that baggage or that expectation or discard it um, when, when working with this, within this area. And so what I thought I'd talk about with this is a typeface I made called Sandy that was always intended to be a total departure from um, what, what I recognized or what I wanted to make. And I wanted to explore this idea of like restrained creation and um, mechanical creation going off and becoming something much more sort of uh, personalized and handwritten because I found that up until this point all of my work was quite digital and and like clean and crisp and like uh, like solid line or like this clean crisp line within uh, within vector art and and so I I became really interested in well what if I was able to take it out of the computer and then draw it much more sort of like like calligraphy or like handwriting and all that sort of thing and so that's why I went down this path and it led me to um, explore letter forms that uh, ask the question like, well, what if I had only two elements within each letter form? Uh, one that united them all and then one that, unify, uh, that identified them. And so uh, within that, I, I became kind of interested in this idea of, well, what if 
like common groups of letters or smaller, um, like shorter, frequent small letter, uh, groups of letters or connecting words or names became one character. Like they, they became a ligature in themselves. And that led me to like go off and create a typeface that had, that auto um, made ligatures with contextual alternatives and all sorts of stuff that um, added this added level of depth and can, could serve space. Like I was interested in going, well, what if like, this was up less, Pay, uh, less space on the page and uh, so I've introduced like sort of something like 300 different names in this at the moment and uh, it's sort of growing and it's going to continue to grow because I'd love to keep putting different names in it but um, but you can see how it sort of types out on, on the side there but uh, within this I I was inspired by sort of hieroglyphics and um, like cartouches within those that like house certain information within a contained sort of area and I was always interested in like how it looked digitally and, and how that sort of, you know, created this nice sort of Morse code like texture or um, uh, like shorthand or something like that. And I was inspired by all of that, but I was just definitely like the intention was to make it handwritten at the end and imbue it with personality or the personality of the person writing it. And I found that it's quite, it actually is quite easy to take on board and learn and adapt and uh, depending on your writing implement changes how the letter forms look and uh, there might be little nuances uh, like with normal handwriting that creep into it and it's been a really sort of interesting process to get more and more people to try this out. So um, that's been a lot of sort of what ifs thrown at you and um, well six core questions but like within that there's been so many different things um, that I've uh, explored on top of that because what I find is that I often need uh, or make additional rules to drive those typefaces a little bit more so I use these rules as creative catalysts and, it, and as much as what if I remove detail it becomes down to well, what if I also did this other thing within that space as well and uh, I, I, it's not going to be a, an exhaustive list but I just wanted to show you a few things that sort of um, ha sort of hammer that home and how I find that I have to think my way out of a problem in this sort of case or um, pushes me to try something do, uh, different or adapt my thinking. And so within that, like uh, within this page here, like I, it's about well, what if I took inspiration from a ancient scripts or um, different languages or tried to adapt or update or translate them to something new or my thinking or whatever. And so uh, on one hand, we've got like Ogham script where I, I put um, the the letter forms we know, I, I built them into the, I hid them in the, the, the new shapes and then uh, sort of explored formatting in a different way. And then in the middle you've got Phoenician where um, I was interested in making an updated sort of modern day stylized version of Phoenician but if a letter had split off into two over history I you know allowed that to be the same uh, letter form again and uh, or the same visual again and uh, I was curious about what would happen with that overlap I was okay with it and then with the uh, the one on the other side like that was inspired by Japanese and sort of katakana and um, I saw a learning guide in my friend's house and I was super interested in what would happen if I mixed what if I mixed these two scripts together like so I made Japanese versions of the Latin alphabet or just took flavor from both and um, it meant that I went off and uh, I studied the shapes and then I made a grid from that and then I drew the letter forms on that new grid and then gave it back to people who actually spoke Japanese to see if there was any accidental overlap and then I would adjust the letter because I didn't want confusion to creep in, I just wanted to make new type that embodied that sort of thinking. And um, and it's something that I'm going to keep continuing to do. Uh, but the other things that I, I find that I can take uh, cues from or help get direction is like what if I take inspiration from things that are happening to me at that time and so with these it's about my sort of my job as a teacher um, and I, I've, I've been given um, a lot of marking to do at the time and so I wanted to visualize that with the one on the left and so it was about my time going away or exploding in this case and so I took it as a key to um, to revisit a previous typeface with a new point of knowledge which I mentioned before and which will come up again uh, but how do I visualize that? Like I, I'm so interested in visualizing like uh, these these thoughts and things. And so uh, when it came to the other side, like what I was trying to 
show or um, demonstrate was uh, iteration and ideation. So uh, uh, something that I usually set my type classes every now and then is like the idea of like what how many A's can you draw how many how many letter forms can you draw in a certain amount of time or to fill up a certain page or um, just going through that iterative process is something that I well, sort of enjoy so much but like um, it ended up making a complete typeface of A's and then that became the question of well what if every letter was an A in an alphabet and uh, what kind of combinations and interesting shapes would that make within words or um, like depending on what word it is and so I, I drew as many A's as I could and then um, vectorized them as well. But I ended up with like something like 167-ish or something. And uh, then that led me to have alternatives for alternates for uppercase, lowercase, a uh, keyboard's worth of punct uh, punctuation and, and numerals. And so um, it was kind of a just an interesting sort of thing. And I ended up calling it R just because reasons. But it was it was fun uh, to sort of engage with. And, and so... Uh, with like the revisiting in mind, I do tend to just like try things very quickly in that like I had an idea for a typeface a long time ago that was like what if we could view each letter from all four different axes, so north, south, east, west, and I wanted to visualize that and now that I knew that I could make a variable sort of typeface, like I could put it along a slider, so that was kind of fun. And um, so that doesn't have to be sort of overly intense. But then on the other side, we have um, another typeface that was inspired by Joseph Albers and the Bauhaus. And um, it was for an, an exhibition where um, we made a thing to commemorate, like the, um, uh, to celebrate the, the Bauhaus's 100 year anniversary. Uh, and I decided to revisit this typeface and make it into a color font based on, you know, that, that sort of um, Bauhaus theories. And um, so I ended up with like four different colorways and I wanted it to have contextual alternatives. So if you put two A's next to each other, they'd be different colors. And it was a nice sort of way to explore just not changing too much, but revisiting and, and adding a new element or a layer to something. And, uh, and sometimes I, like when I do take inspiration from people, it's not necessarily who they are or what they do, but um, like, uh, with the one on left here, like my friend gave me, um, a brush pen, my friend Lock and Phil, and I hadn't used the brush pen up until that point. So I used it as a reason to explore it in my own sort of way. Like I, I had to get better at it, but I used it as a, a catalyst to say, well, what if I'm like explore mark making here? What kind of letter forms would I make with this new tool? And then with the one on the right, like I was, um, uh, wanting to make something for my friend Nicole Arnett Phillips uh, who's always been a sort of supporter of my work and I, I decided to see well what if I imbued this typeface with, a sen with an essence of where she's from so New Zealand and um, and take it into that space of fairly exploratory letter forms or spectral letter forms that um, uh, she's been so you know um, supportive of over the years and so it was just not a nice thing, sort of thing to do and and so I've, I find that I do t tend to do that quite a bit. Like I'll celebrate a person or something that they've shown me or taught me or anything like that. So like with one side uh, of this, I've got Vim Corral, whose work inspired me very early on and sort of encouraged me to keep going down this sort of path. And, and this is a typeface I made that was sort of articulating the before and after of um, when I came across his work. And then with the one on the right, I've got uh, Brett Peaver, who taught me a lot of sign writing techniques. And um, I, I used not only those sign writing techniques, but also 36 days of type to sort of articulate the variation and the interest that can come through sign writing and the variety that can come with it in those sort of techniques. And, um, you know, kind of force myself to uh, go through this process of uh, making 36 different treatments for this stuff and, and it came out like this. Um, and and it with these meetings of people and all that sort of stuff, I the one on the left here is inspired by uh, Philippe Apua who gave me a grid book when, when I met him and uh, I was just so overjoyed that I went off and decided, well, what if I you know had him in mind when I made this sort of thing um, and I because uh, I was inspired by his work, and I decided, well, what if I just swapped each side of the letter form, but I did it within the grid book that he gave me, so like that catalyst to be like, oh, I just want to use this thing. Um, 
but the final one of these is inspired by my friend Maria Montes, and uh, she's taught me a lot of calli calligraphy techniques over the years, and um, I wanted to explore from my perspective something that is so personal and has so many, um, it's so steeped in history. Like I, I became, this one was like, well, what, what would I do with it? What if I explored it from the techniques and made completely new letter forms out of it, but with these heavy sort of, um, uh, these tools that have been used for years and years and years to to make the letter forms we know and to bring personality to them, and it ended up with this sort of typeface here um, that I've called Tala. But um, if it's not inspired by people, it's inspired by things that I sort of again I enjoy. So like uh, with these, it's um, science fiction themes and video games. Uh, so with one of them uh, on the left, it's what if I um, was inspired by codes within games? But like, what if each letter was the same three concentric circles, but just subtle changes in it made a different letter? And it was sort of a very early attempt at making a typeface that no one could really read. And then the one on the, the right is something that was inspired by time travel and paradoxes. And just a simple idea of like this cube going around this line, which I called a time loop in the end. But every time it got back to the starting point, it had gone back in time and run into itself and then it keeps going and then eventually it will cause a paradox that you know destroys the universe. But, uh, but simple sort of just fun little things. It's what you can sort of use as a creative catalyst. What if I was inspired by this thing? Um, and sometimes I can be inspired by challenges. So uh, Sarah Hindman um, gave me a, uh, this challenge to make a typeface out of a 45 RPM spindle. And so I went off and I made a grid out of it and then I explored that grid and I wanted to um, look at motion and um, movement and layering and all that sort of stuff and this is what sort of came out of it, Jira did. And then with the other one, it's uh, on the right, like it, I was stuck on a plane. I didn't want to be on a plane. I wanted to take my mind off it. So I decided to um, draw a letter form or an alphabet and then break it into components and then move around those components as many times as I could until I ran out of ideas or there were no other components. And so I ended up with like over a thousand different shapes between all the letter forms um, that uh, was a really sort of fun, just iterative process to go through and ended up being a typeface that um, uh, has so many different contextual alternatives that um, every time you write something, it becomes something new, which is quite cool. Uh, I, as I've mentioned before, I do like to work with grids a lot. And so I went through a process a little while back where I made a hundred grids uh, in a hundred days straight. And since then I've challenged myself to go, well, what if I made a letter form on each of these things? And, uh, what would that mean? What would I, how would I adapt to each of these, um, these grids? And I, I, I've tried to, you know, use them as much as I can. Uh, but another thing that was made for 36 days of type, by the way, a really great thing to engage with, but. Um, it also was something that I used to try and teach myself After Effects because I find that um, if I get frustrated not knowing how to do something, I will go full headlong into trying to figure out how to do it um, because I, uh, I get annoyed that I don't know how to do something and then try and figure it out. But these are another, like this is where like that um, automation or the motion and the interaction is sort of come into it because I've wanted to learn about variable typefaces. What if I could move my type or someone else could or what if I um, learnt Drawbot to try to go into automatic motion and um, things like that have come through that sort of process. And uh, by doing that, like I also have this thing where if you engage with the kind of work that like when I engage in this kind of work, I often try to be nice and art visually articulate. Like sometimes I feel like I, I should show people how things are made uh, or be helpful when making um, these letter forms and, and sort of take them on that journey and support them uh, through and guide them through their understanding, right? And so these um, animations were uh, designed for my um, my book, um, the release of my book, Specular Type. And I was just trying to cut straight to the point of the things you were going to see within this book and how they were made and and where they came from. And it meant that I was just trying to, um, you know, let them in on the process. And it was something that I found very useful and people have definitely appreciated it. Um, because th this is an abnormal way to approach type and you don't have to do it. And, and there are places for it and against it. And so... Uh, when I'm doing it, I, I do find that I vary wildly between wanting to help and then wanting to see what happens if I don't. And so the one on the right here is um, Clara. And Clara is a cryptic typeface that I made uh, a little while back 
where I've intentionally put 10 different versions of every letter within it so that when I type set something, you can't really use frequency analysis to figure out what letters are what. And then when you write it, it's encrypted as you write it um, or key it in. Uh, but then each artwork that I've made for it is giving you a hint as to how it's made. Uh, and then there's a 500 word sort of article that I wrote that use weird, use the weird turns of phrase to, again, give you more uh, of a clue as to what I, I went through to make them. And I might have been a bit too harsh in this sense or a bit too crazy in this because it hasn't been deciphered since I made it. Um, so that's kind of fun. Uh, but the last thing I thought I'd show um, is I've, I've been really sort of interested in the this edition of movement and, and programming within my type and uh, it's something that I'm only really at the beginning of and something that I, I want to take further and so if anyone's out there that knows about this kind of thing, whether it be Python scripting or P5JS, which is what these were made in, I'd definitely like to talk about um, uh, how we can sort of maybe make some of my weirder ideas come out. But uh, but. What that leads me to is just thinking, well, what next? Like, and with me, it's, well, I don't know. Like, I'm just going to keep following these paths and seeing where they lead and having some fun with it. But for you, like, well, like I'm interested in see what you would do with these what if sort of um, things. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot of ifs in my work as I go forward. But, um, well, for, for you, it's like, well, what if you tried some of these directions that I mentioned over the course of this talk and uh, what if you went off and tried to decipher Clara like some people have got close but no one's kind of figured it out yet uh, and then like you know the the cool one of like what if you took the time for yourself to go off and try that weird idea for type that you thought you shouldn't do or couldn't do or didn't have time to do like what if you went off and made that like I'd be curious to see what you made uh, and then well, what's the worst that can happen like um, you know, I don't know but I'm sure it'd be very fun uh, so with that thought in mind I'll just say Thank you. Thank you for listening. Um, uh, I hope you've enjoyed uh, the things I've talked about today. Uh, go by all means, follow me at Specular Type for more of what I do uh, or look at my website. But um, other than that, yeah, like I said, thank you very much for listening.